Hi everyone, uh, thanks for coming along to our session this afternoon. Um, our showcase on Sector plus Gatsby, uh, taking a distribution decoupled. And I'm introducing Marco and Gareth from the Sparks Interactive team, talking about Sector. Um, if you'd like to know a little bit more about Sector as a distribution, um, we do have a sponsor showcase session coming up later in the day. You can ask some questions about that. But I will hand it over to Marco and Gareth now to take you through um, their presentation. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Sector and Gatsby Atlas of Drupal. So let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Marco, and I'm a Drupal developer and sysadmin in uh, Sparks Interactive. And I've been working with Drupal for the last 10 years. And with me today uh, for this presentation, there is a great front-end developer and a colleague. So let me introduce uh, Gareth Poole. Not my words. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's start. So I'm pretty sure you heard already about uh, uh, headless uh, decoupled Drupal. So just in case, uh, let me refresh what uh, headless decoupled Drupal uh, is. So essentially, uh, a headless Drupal is a website or web application where the backend part is made in Drupal and the front end is made uh, with a different technology. So to be more precise, uh, the back end uh, use uh, Drupal for the content management and the content as a content repository too, and serve uh, um, the contents only through REST web services. And of course, uh, the front end uh, is an application consuming the contents from the Drupal uh, backend as a an API REST endpoint. Uh, but today, uh, we are talking about a little extra uh, on top of this uh, standard decoupled Drupal. So, uh, as you can see here um, in this slide, we, are, uh, we have an extra layer between the Drupal backend and the uh, front end. So, the uh, little extra is uh, Gatsby. So, um, um, uh, <laughs> so, sorry, I'm a bit emotional here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in this in this uh, uh, in this scenario, Gatsby is uh, is uh, consuming uh, the. Um, so, in this application, sorry, in the solution, uh, we still have Drupal as a content management, and uh, is serving the. Uh, as the previous uh, serving the content as a REST API endpoint. But the application, uh, in this case, who is consuming the con content is Gatsby and not straight the front end application. Gatsby essentially is, consumes all content and generates a static version of the front end or site or web application and deploys it as a static site or web application. So our final front-end site is literally a static um, a site made of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and of course, all assets. But um, of course, <clears throat> if necessary, the front-end can still interact with the uh, third-party APIs but also interact with the back end. Uh, for example, if uh, the front end has to submit a web form, is able to interact with the back end through the, uh, you know, the, the REST API. So, um, why Gatsby Atlas Drupal then? Okay, so um, there are many reasons, but I'm trying to summarize here the, the, the most important one. So the first one, um, our site, our essentially content repository at this point, um, can be consumed by, by, by more uh, content, by more application 
of course, a front-end uh, uh, website, but can be consumed by a mobile application and many others. And so our Drupal is just a API endpoint and can be consumed from different and various new forms of uh, media. And, and this en enhance the flexibility. And also another important point is the diversification of the teams. Uh, before everything was made in Drupal, which is fantastic still, uh, but in this way you can have a differentiation between uh, who take care of the backend and who is building the front end, give them more flexibility and not necessarily they should know about Drupal, Twig, and all the Drupal uh, uh, template system and things. Um, of course, very important here, and I want to stress on this one, security performances and search engine uh, optimization. Because the site is static, you are serving a static website, uh, you are exposing your uh, site as a static website, this increase a lot the performances. Essentially, Casby is fantastic in creating a static version of, of your website where all the pages are an HTML file and all assets are optimized to be rendered perfectly and super fast. You don't have any query on database. You don't have any uh, rendering or processing. Everything is a pure HTTP requests to HTML and assets. And this increases a lot the performances. And as I said, uh, security. So you can literally, if you don't have any interaction back from your front end to the back end, you can literally turn off your Drupal and leave your static website over there. And it's almost impossible to be attacked because there is no PHP, nothing there which is very, very secure. Also, another problem about the coupled uh, Drupal solution in the past, we noticed uh, search engines are not very happy because if you have um, uh, an old-style decoupled Drupal and you have a front-end made by one-page JavaScript, uh, single page application. Sing, sing, single page application. Yeah. Thank you for the assets. <laughs> and uh, sometimes uh, your search engine is not interpreting and executing the JavaScript, so it's not able to fetch all the content from your website. But having a static website, you have uh, a very user friendly, actually, robot uh, uh, <laughs> a crawler friendly uh, site, and is very easy to fetch any single piece of content. And uh, to finish, um, this is a, a good alternative to other solutions, like just let me say one, like Contentful, where you have exactly this situation where you are you have separating the, um, the, the, the content management from the front end. But this one is open source and Drupal. So you can provide a friendly backend and a friendly solution for uh, content managing and uh, give this freedom uh, mm -hmm. to the front-end developers to build their uh, own uh, front-end solution. never quite solution. sure when Contemple are going to get rid of their free plan. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, open source is quite a big advantage for us. Yeah, especially economically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's pass the stage to Gareth. <laughs> so I thought I'd uh, talk a little bit about the original motiva motivation of why we actually did this in the first place. And it was around two or three years ago now. I was building um, a few applications for one of our clients in an environment which was Salesforce. Now, because some of the data was quite sensitive, I didn't have any access to um, actually uh, do any HTML, do any CSS. I had to build it separately but then I had to help them integrate it, which was a pain. Um, and I thought, well, why can't I just have some access to this uh, the system and build the, um, build the DOM on the fly and 
plug in the CSS, plug in the JavaScript. Re that's basically what React does out of the box. So the company had a, a rebrand, they had a, a new style guide. So I built a whole bunch of these components using the Storybook. These, uh, I built them in React. So a lot of these components had different states and different complexities. And so I thought, you know, React's a good way to do this because I could change something on my end and it would appear in Salesforce where they have all the access. So it was pretty ideal. And of course, um, a few months later, they wanted to upgrade their D7 site to Drupal 8. And I had just created this beautiful style guide, uh, the, the, this beautiful UI kit and story, storybook, all in React. And I didn't really want to redo that in Twig and our typical, um, our usual uh, Drupal theming procedure. So I kind of looked, started looking around for alternatives and we uh, landed on Gatsby. So what is Gatsby? I think Marco probably covered quite a it quite well, but from a front end uh, perspective, uh, Gatsby is a static site generator, SSG. Uh, there's quite a few of them around. So there's Next.js, there's Jekyll, there's Hugo. There's quite, there's more and more coming out every week. Uh, Gatsby is based on React, um, which is great for component driven architectures, which is what we want to be doing. Um, so Gatsby pulls data from, at build time, when you build a Gatsby site, it pulls data from APIs. It could be it's Drupal, it could be Contentful, it could be WordPress, it could be Shopify, it could be Spotify, you can have a plugin for. Yeah. Uh, it pulls all this data, puts it into one GraphQL API, which um, front-end developers can then query and pick out the bits that they want and build interfaces and components from that. Uh, Gatsby generates static HTML, Mark has said, uh, CSS and JavaScript. It's, we're not shipping React to the client. It just, we're using Re Gatsby, we're using Node.js to turn React into HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And why do we choose Gatsby? In a slide, compatibility, compatibility with Drupal, and this is the key, really. Uh, this, Plenty of cool frameworks like Next.js is really cool at the moment, but this um, source plugin, so these source plugins is what you use to plug your data into Gatsby. And this makes it super easy just to, I'll show you. Okay, so in our Gatsby config, we just give Gatsby a Drupal URL and we give it the, um, it uses the JSON API, um, not module, the core JSON yeah. API, um, an endpoint of Drupal, and you can pass in some um, header parameters like an API key, or you can you can pass in basic auth information, which is what we do typically to go to Drupal, grab all the information from the API, and then build it into a GraphQL uh, model. And this is kind of what this looks like. So if you look on the left hand side, you can see we've got our pages, our articles, promotions, resources. We've even got entity queues up there. We've got all our media and we run these queries. So I can just, you can see this. I grab the title, the node ID, the body, run the query. I get all the information. I grab this query and paste it into my Gatsby code. And I've got everything that I need. Pretty good. Um, so performance, as Marco said, is a big part of why we chose Gatsby. Um, Gatsby makes it um, incredibly easy for me to build a, a site with Lighthouse scores like this. Um, it it's really makes um, meeting our performance budgets a low effort task, which is what we all want for our users. We're not making any database requests from our websites. Uh, we don't need to worry about PHP versions or PHP speed if there's a rogue script which has gone haywire. Uh, server performance, what Apache modules are installed, what version of image magic's there, or you know things like load balancing. I don't need to worry about anymore. I'm a front-end developer. I don't want to have to worry about those things. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gatsby out of the box gives us some pretty cool things like uh, modern media formats, like AVIF, um, which is a new image format, which is really really 
quite good. It reduces image JPEG, the typical JPEG by 25%. WebP, which is another, is 15, 20%. Yeah. Uh, AV1, which is a new video format and um, high, efficiency, high efficiency video codec, I think that one is, which, um, yeah, you get all these things out free out of the box. Uh, data prefetching, which is really cool. So, so with Gatsby, um, basically all your links on, on the page, as, it, as your links scroll into the viewport, it will go and grab the link, the, the, those web pages, the data, the GraphQL data from those in case you want to use it. So when you're clicking around, it feels super fast. It's pretty cool. Uh, security is a big one. So it's completely static. So we don't have any slash user. There's no attack vectors that you, you can't start running S uh, SQL commands with a query string or nothing. select star or any, yeah. any of that. No brute force, no injections, nothing. Yeah. Aesthetic. Yeah. And what we can do with our Drupal CMS is we can lock them down with things like basic auth. We can IP restrict them. And for Bird of the Year, which is a competition, a pretty big competition in New yeah, Zealand. Yeah, New Zealand is a very big thing. Uh, it's once a year, and they don't make any changes to the site for most of the year. We can turn that server off. And the front end just stays. Yeah, front end stays static with the Drupal off and stays there and just serve the site. And in case they want to change something, just turn on the back end and then make the changes and boom, deploy them. So it's and really good for like when uh, critical um, upgrades come out. We don't have to rush to update these sites because they're all behind these. Barriers. Yeah, we you don't care about uh, patches or something because uh, you know just we do saying, care, but we're not getting up at four a.m. Let's to say do. don't care, not don't care in that way, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but you are not critically affected uh, by uh, the um, scripting uh, vulnerabilities on the Nardis or PHP or Drupal modules or something, uh, or they find out something on. Uh, PHP com uh, Drupal components, and there is no Drupal there. Drupal is just the CMS and is offline, and uh, you are presenting to the world just a static HTML uh, standard uh, host. So it's more secure, essentially, and performant, as we say. Okay, hiring front end talent. So Gatsby kind of changes the game a little bit in that hiring devs is pretty hard. Hiring Drupal devs is even harder. So by using Gatsby, we're opening up the hiring pool to developers who don't need to be familiar with things like site building or theming in Drupal with all its, um, es is it esoteric is the word? <laughs> like diff different, um, they don't have to be familiar with things like Display Suite or uh, Twig or th things like this. We can hire developers fresh out of university who've just done a course on React and we can pretty much get them up and running quite quickly. Um, and as long as they can query for it in GraphQL, developers don't really need to know where the data is coming from, which is, for me, that's great. Yeah, it is. And uh, issues are more clearly defined as back-end and front-end issues. So if something's going wrong with the front-end, Marco can point the finger at me. Yeah. <laughs> and if I'm not getting the JSON at the endpoint that I want, I can point the finger at you. Yeah, dividing responsibilities is uh, another point. Uh, now we can be responsible to provide a good API endpoint or provide a good data set and the front end is just uh, responsible to make it working on the front and uh, there is no more this uh, continuous interaction between dev and front uh, where every time uh, there is I'm not worried about clearing caches anymore <laughs> <laughs> why, is this, why is this not working? <laughs> yeah uh, developer experience, just a few words on how it is working with Gatsby. Um, so out of the box, it gives you a local server environment with um, hot reloading out of the box. It's really, really simple. Puts your website on port 8000 and you're up and, up and away. It ships with GraphQL, which is that interface that I showed you before, which makes it easy to learn how to use GraphQL. And it just really helps you out with coming, building your queries. Once you've built a query that works, you just copy it and put it into your into your code. It's great. Uh, Git branch deploys is something that we're actually looking at quite a little a bit more at the moment. Which is uh, on your front end, you check out a feature branch, 
called Easter egg. You push that branch up to your repository and our CI can build a subdomain called your feature branch dot client dot code NZ or whatever. And of course, the developer efficiency equals project efficiency equals happy clients. And oh, did I leave an emoji in there? <laughs> <laughs> we know where, where we're leading. <laughs> Okay, some of the things that we do use on top of Sector to make, um, to make this happen for us is Paragraphs. Um, it's pretty good at one-to-one -one relationship between a paragraph called card and your storybook component called card. So clients can refer to the storybook, add a paragraph, and they know what it's going to look like. It's just, um, yeah, I love paragraphs, actually. <laughs> uh, key Auth is... Uh, a module which allows you to um, uh, protect things with API keys, or you can identify con content on Drupal based off the user's API key. So we can serve up different stuff to different users. Uh, REST UI is just a front front end interface to the REST system in core in the core of Drupal. Uh, Webform REST allows us to post web forms, uh, get the web form fields. Sometimes I like to get the fields from Drupal and build a React uh, form from them, uh, which has work, worked out pretty well. And we actually use Webform REST for Bird of the Year. So all the votes actually push to Webform REST via a Cloudflare worker, which I like Cloudflare. <laughs> Uh, REST menu items, so it just it gives you a JSON tree of your menus, so I can build navigations from uh, JSON. Uh, build hooks is probably the most important, if you want to take it from there. Yeah, um, the, all of this uh, and now makes sense maybe if I give you a little bit more uh, example. So the building hooks uh, is another module, Drupal module, which allow you to uh, detect changes in Drupal and uh, also to trigger these uh, uh, through a webhook external URL and uh, something. And this something is a deployment. So um, let's see what I need to uh, do that. So to do that, apart those modules, Gareth just uh, um, explain that we need uh, a CDCI uh, pipeline where, um, for example, we are using GitLab because we are using GitLab also for other things and we found out they have this uh, CDCI uh, part where you can uh, literally uh, uh, create your building uh, uh, mechanism and your pipeline of mechanism, but you can use any of those or even more uh, automation to build uh, and run your Gatsby and make Gatsby uh, working for you to create the static uh, site. So uh, in case of GitLab, uh, you, we are uh, using uh, GitLab runners. These GitLab runners uh, in our case are uh, Docker, container, uh, GitLab provides for you a, a Docker image where um, this Docker image uh, is uh, there listening through a reverse port and a secure connection. And when uh, you hit through the uh, webhook we mentioned before, so when your Drupal website is ready to deploy your content changes and so rebuild your static site, is hitting GitLab and uh, actually I'll show you. <laughs> so I have this little uh, example. I forgot I have this video, but I'll show you. So you make your changes on your content. Oops. Oops. Oh, sorry. So <laughs> I don't know how to stop it. You make the, your changes on your uh, piece of content. This is a, um, a, a standard page in, uh, in, uh, in, in sector. So you make your changes, you save your node entity, then on the top you can see uh, there is get detected there is a change and then you click this this is the webhook and this tells to GitLab to do rebuild the uh, the static site GitLab now is very I accelerated but GitLab is a uh, uh, downloading uh, um, of course Node.js and also 
uh, in this uh, container and also of course Gatsby. Then Gatsby is fetching all the contents from uh, the Drupal, is generating all the image styles, all the uh, HTML uh, pages and everything. And in a blink of an eye, uh, not really, but <laughs> almost, is uh, our sync to the the final destination. So and this and this made your static site. So essentially, um, the web hook I mentioned before was to uh, let your site uh, uh, send the information to, uh, in our case, GitLab, and GitLab is using this runner to, which are Docker containers essentially, where is all the time, each time you're deploying, downloading uh, Node.js and then uh, uh, Gatsby and tell Gatsby to fetch uh, uh, your, at all content from your site. Seems crazy, but it's, it's like that. In the modern day, virtualization makes these things happen and it's so cool. So, um, you want to take this? Yeah, sure. Um, so, as Marco said, that particular project would rsync the, the build files to an Nginx server, I think. Uh, but there are other ways of doing this. You can use things like because everything's static, these are just files. You can put them on a CDN like Cloudflare Pages, Netlify, Azure, AWS, Google Cloud. And it's good having your content at the edge because people in London are going to get a, a European copy of your website. People in Australia are going to get an Australian copy of your website. And uh, with Cloudflare and Netlify, they do all your cache and validation for you. And it's really just crazy easy. And of course, you get the performance benefits of being on a CDN and security. Yeah, exactly. So we're looking to look a bit more into this next year and start moving our static sites over to the to the edge. So essentially, your site will be double cached <laughs> because uh, essentially yeah. it's already static and pre-compiled by Gatsby, but also you are serving it. You can serve it in a standard, uh, you know, patch engine X web server. But also straight from there, your target point can be also straight to a CDN, bypassing at all, even the ideally or actually possibly, you can also uh, cut out your um, web server, uh, the, the hosting and literally host your endpoint, uh, your front end straight to a CDN or one of these services. Yeah, and a lot of these services cost zero dollars. It's crazy. Yeah, so, well, not really zero, but cheap. So you pay for your build minutes exactly. rather than the uh, actual hosting. Yeah. Quite cool. So um, let's go ahead. Other considerations. So when you use Gatsby LS Drupal solution, um, this is, uh, you need to consider the solution might not be uh, applicable for any situation. This is working well when you have uh, uh, clear ideas in the structure of your website and uh, if, where everything is pre-decided um, uh, in terms of how many content types and fields you have and is clear uh, the, you know, the dynamic and the, the, the structure of the, your website or web application. So if you have this, uh, it works perfectly because um, everything is smooth and uh, there is a, a very good um, outcome of this. Might be a little bit more complicated if your uh, website or application is in continuously uh, change like you have uh, new content types all the time, a lot of changes on the fields or things like that uh, might be uh, a little bit more complicated, but not impossible. But at that point, it might be uh, probably, is, probably it will be more convenient to use the normal Drupal uh, solution. And then as soon as you get something in a new field or something, you will, uh, it will appear directly. Um, another thing is the, and just to wrap a little bit, uh, why choose a sector uh, to as the couple Drupal? There are no reasons to uh, particular to use sector. Uh, you can use the couple Drupal um, with any, even with a vanilla Drupal, but 
because we are talking about giving to the uh, final user a good content management experience, Sector is a Drupal distribution, which is very friendly for the content management point of view. And this, um, for us, was helpful to start with something there where uh, who does content management is more helped in, uh, in doing this process. So, um, yeah, we always use Sector to do our decoupled uh, Drupal um, solutions, but you're free to use any Drupal or a vanilla Drupal. So what's should next? We, yeah, we've got 10 minutes, so we should probably look at questions. Actually, just before we do, um, if you want to learn some more, there's some good links here. That This uh, video on YouTube is actually a, is about, it's about an hour long, and it's very good at uh, selling this idea of using Gatsby and it's very, it's actually very Drupal focused as well. So it's I encourage everyone who's interested to watch that because it is very good. Yeah, yeah, it's very good video, and uh, I I'd advise to have a look. Should we have a look at the questions? All right. Yeah. So if there's anyone out there in the audience, oh yeah, here comes one from Lee. So uh, <laughs> that's a good question. How did you go with content editor features uh, like like preview, etc.? Um, uh, so preview can be a bit of a problem um, because we have to kind of educate our clients that um, these things have to be built, and it can take up to you know five minutes or so. Uh, Gatsby do have a commercial product which uh, is called uh, CMS Previews, which uh, has a plugin for Drupal as well. Um, you basically click on a button in Drupal which says "See Preview" and it sends you to a Gatsby.io uh, URL with your site which is live updating as you save your, your, your content. But as I say, it's a product that Gatsby doesn't do out of the box. It's a commercial product, I believe. I've, I've used it, it's very good. It's quite creepy how, how good it works. Um, and yeah, I mean, if, you, if, you're, if you have a site which has multi-stage content approval, review, and it's been updated by a bunch of authors all the time, this might not be the best solution for you. But for a lot of clients who don't really touch the, the sites every day and with projects which are very front end he heavy, have an application built in, this is a good solution for it. And if you just want data from, from, your, from, your, data, from your source, just, um, it's, uh, it's a really good solution for it. I want to add a little thing to this. Uh, you can uh, choose uh, the destination of the deployment on uh, through the webhook, and you can literally deploy your uh, uh, your let's say preview or your testing site in a different uh, target. So you can preview essentially. If you're happy with all your changes, you can switch and say, "I don't want. I want to." Uh, um, deploy to the UAT version of the website and Gatsby will build and, and deploy over there. So you are free to navigate all your changes, uh, do share um, for proofreading and something like that. And when you are ready, you can just choose a, a deploy to uh, production and then Gatsby will deploy over there. So essentially, it's just the waiting time probably uh, of uh, saving and, and refresh compared to uh, waiting three minutes. Last, the last website we were built in three minutes. Yeah. And, and that was Bird of the Year, which has tons of images. And it creates different versions of those images all in three minutes. It's pretty, yeah, pretty quick. It's a different approach, just a education. Actually, no, it's one of the sponsors of Build Hooks has just left a comment, which is pretty cool. We're, we're kind of looking to extend Build Hooks to support GitLab, their API, so we can actually show our clients when things are being built through the GitLab API, which yeah. is pretty cool. Nice. Just a, a question there from, from Jonathan Hunt. Have you tried Gatsby Cloud? Have you tried I that have. One? Yeah. 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 It's, uh, like it? Quite an impressive product. Yeah, I've actually done a one-on-one -on -one with one of the, the sales guys about what, what they could do for our use case. Um, yeah, they, they I'm not sure how they switch on some magic cloud things with a product, but they managed to get build times down to under a minute sometimes, <laughs> which I don't know how they do that. And they do the whole um, deploy, uh, uh, branch deploy thing as well. So you deploy, you 
push a branch and it deploys to that branch dot your, your site. I like it. I think I do prefer it to Netlify, and, but I do like what Cloudflow are doing at the moment as well. And how, how big of a build have we, have we done, um, or have you done rather? Sorry. Sorry? Um, how big of a build? I mean, how many pages? If, uh, for, for a large content site, is the build time prohibitive? Not so much. It really depends on image, how much images are, because that's where the CPU is used creating different, because we create an AVIF version, a WebP version, a JPEG version, all the images of different sizes, so it's all responsive. It's more, more about your, your media than, um, than page number, but I guess if you're getting into over a few thousand pages, you might start to notice some problems, but actually Gatsby have just uh, a month ago launched uh, Gatsby 4, which has deferred, uh, deferred static build, so if you host with them or Netlify, um, if you go to a page which was created two years ago, no one's been on it, it doesn't build that page at build time, it build it when someone visits it. Visits it. So you can pick and choose your m most fresh content to build at build time and then have the, the, the other content build on the fly when people actually visit. Yeah, so they, they give you some options for, for only building what's been changed, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Cool. Another question from Lee. Um, are, are we using caches from previous build to speed up deploys on GitLab? Yes. Yeah. So we'll, yeah, we'll patch sure. the, the node modules and various other caches mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So it's a, it's a nice mature product ecosystem that's that's really dealing with those those issues, those key issues around speed. And... Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and just a couple more minutes left um uh a question for you on a, on a philosophical standpoint where do you stand on the on the uh the question of decouple all the things where, where do you well, agree do you have different views uh i would think you, would, would you ever go for a full decoupled um all the time I, I have the impression, but it's just a personal opinion, so don't take me wrong here. I have a, I think a Drupal should uh, uh, consider this approach because uh, it's a trend out there and, uh, and can, to improve the strength of Drupal, uh, we should follow this flexibility. So, and uh, allow Drupal to be used as a pure content management, not as a complete system. Essentially, uh, I'm not saying Drupal should give a, a specific decoupled version, but is something we should accept uh, and uh, go through this process. And if we follow this, uh, Drupal will shine, still shining. Otherwise, uh, if we stuck in imposing the old style, Drupal probably might be you know someone might not choose anymore because uh, as to you know but it's working so far as adapting perfectly and i'm so happy about that as a front-end developer i just find myself i'm building things faster and of better standard is all i'll say <laughs> yeah last one thanks for that uh one minute left any last minute questions from the audience Get, get your orders in, get your orders in. Nice. Any final comments from uh, either you, Marco, or Gareth in the, the minute we have left? Um, that YouTube link that I, I shared in the spreadsheet yeah. um, is quite, it's very good. You should all go watch that, I think. I want to say something else, even it's not really related to Caspi, but uh, give a try to Sector because uh, independently, if you are using Sector as a decoupled solution, it's also a, a good solution uh, out of the box and uh, it's good not just for this purpose, but for many others. But I like it. And yeah, I think in the next year or so, we're going to do some more with sector to make it even more approachable with, with this approach, whether it's sector headless or yeah, maybe whether we branch off or not, we're, we're not sure yet, but I think in the next year we want to do more of this sort of work and um, 
yeah, clients want fast websites and that's what we want to give them. <laughs> nice one. Awesome. Thanks very much for that, team. Um, if anyone's got any questions, hit uh, Marco or Gareth up in the channel and we'll see you out there.